Hello and welcome to The Far Away and Nearby. I'm your host, DJ Star Sage, and I'm joined by my co-hosts, Heidi. Hi. And Sue. Greetings. This is our first episode, so we will start off by telling you a little bit about ourselves. And through the coin toss, Sue has won to be the first runner-up there. So um, if you will please, Sue, let us know a little bit about yourself. Well, let's see. I am basically an old hippie. Very old. I am overly educated and underly degreed. Um, I read too much and I write too little. I grew up in the foothills of the Rocky Mountains in an area that is frequently photographed, so I sometimes tell people I grew up under on a picture postcard. Um, it's very beautiful in that area. And I love Indian food that is East Indian food. I haven't ever eaten much Native American food, so I can't speak about that. And that's kind of a rundown of who or what I am. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, and I should explain to our listeners that Sue and I have known each other for many years. We've kept in touch, and here we are now. <laughs> it's true. I am DJ Star Sage. Um, I grew up in the country. I had a cow pasture across the street from my school. After two years of college, well, I did what any sensible country boy would do. I left for the big city. <laughs> um, I wandered through three different schools in two years, and I basically majored in stay away, staying away from home. Um, although, of course, I <laughs> did go home to do laundry on weekends, but... <laughs> um, <laughs> I didn't get my driver's license until I was 27 because being in the middle of nowhere I basically decided there wasn't anywhere that I could drive to that I didn't have to go home from at the end of the day so <laughs> <laughs> um, I enjoy Thai food and also Indian food I, I, I credit my uh, interest in uh, the exotic foods to a modest upbringing. My dad was a very meat and potatoes sort of person, and whenever mom would fiddle with the recipes, well, she would have hell to pay. So, um, you know, when I got out on my own, I decided that I wanted to be adventurous, and there was no turning back. Um, let's see, I have lived all across the country, and I recently made my first trip out of the country. I'll talk about that more another time, but um, of all the places I've been to, I think that one that I'd like to go to someday is San Francisco, because I, I well, I just haven't gotten around to it. You've never been to San Francisco? How have you never been to wow. San Francisco? I know. Everybody's been to San Francisco, DJ. I, I mean, I haven't even changed planes there. Wow. Uh, and uh, <laughs> so yeah, you, you can imagine why I need to go. No, that's uh, I can. <laughs> yes. I mean, I, I, I accept the fact that I could never afford to own a house there because, you know, you have to be a relative of Bill and Melinda Gates. But um, uh, it, Quite possibly, mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> uh, and maybe even to rent an apartment there mm -hmm. these days. And the Silicon Valley decided they wanted to live in San Francisco. And so real people can't live there anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and then the, uh, the last thing that I'd uh, tell you about myself is that I, um, I sometimes will tell people that I'm a gamer, but uh, a lot of people think the definition of a gamer is somebody that plays World of Warcraft or Call of Duty. And, you know, they, they kind of lose their fire in their eyes when I explain to them, no, no, no. When I say games, I mean I like Nintendo games, and I'm talking <laughs> Mario and Legend of Zelda. And, um, and, and then part of that uh, awkward nerdiness is that uh, I do enjoy science fiction. Um, what got me through my awkward teen years was belonging to a science fiction club, and um, 
I've met some of my best friends through that interest. So uh, that's about me, and uh, it's time for you, Heidi. Yay! I'm <laughs> Heidi, and unlike my co-hosts who have all abandoned ship and left me, I still live in the beautiful foothills. She almost said cohorts. That's not far <laughs> from the truth. Not say <laughs> that is that is not necessarily incorrect. Um, much it's like you, I'm also a sci-fi nerd. Uh, I'm I'm a nerd. Uh, I like math and science. Although my major was music, really, there's a lot of math and music. It's just creative math. Um, I like to travel. Uh, mostly, I've been around the country into South America. I love South America. South American food is wonderful. Cuba, Peru, mm, Peru. Um, I love football. <laughs> I really love football. I love football. Um, I love Korean <laughs> music. Uh, I read too much. I probably write too little as well. Should probably do more of that. Um, I I live at home with two itty bitty teeny tiny dogs. I have a zucchini and a sprout, and I have a cat that's bigger than all of them put together. I have a cat that likes to think he's a dog. And uh, my cat just rolls the roost. Our male cat um, takes care of the females, and the females were born this runt, so they're they're kind of dwarf kitties. But um, mm-hmm. he'll walk around the house, and he, it's like he's, well, if I have to... It, it, it's one of those things where <laughs> if you are casting a movie about a character... I, I would think of our male cat as being played by Dom DeLuise in drag and, <laughs> <laughs> you know, kind of like Haunted Honeymoon. And, um, well, he just takes care of our girls and sometimes he'll just pin them down because they're in the need of a good grooming. <laughs> <laughs> well, I no longer have cats. Our last cat committed suicide in Denver. He was a bat. 11 years old, I believe. I was going to ask about your pet situation, but (laughs) I I remembered the cat, and in our before show, we were talking about Sue's um, high-rise apartment. We were talking about some of the things that went on there. Did you want to say something about um, (laughs) the the calamity that was that? Yes, I, I, I rented this beautiful apartment on the 11th floor of a 12 floor building and the 12th floor had a swimming pool and an exercise area and a sauna and I think a steam room I I don't remember exactly but there were no apartments on the 12th floor and we moved into this wonderful place and Suddenly, in it started to snow. Or it, in the winter, it started to snow, and we had water in our living room. And we had water in our living room for the entire time I lived there. The first water in our living room was from the roof. It was leaking, and it ran down the walls and into our living room and soaked up our living room carpet. And they changed the carpet once and told me they had it fixed, but a couple of days later, it was all wet again. So we had tarps on the floor so we could put furniture in the living room, but we didn't have much furniture in the living room. Most of it was in our spare bedroom because <laughs> I didn't want it to sit on wet floors. Uh, and so after a year and a half, and they didn't... It never got dry after that. Um, I don't know how it could have just kept being wet all the time because, you know, it stopped snowing eventually. Mm -hmm. It didn't rain all the time. It doesn't rain a lot in Denver. Um, But they finally got it fixed. and, And after we gave our notice to move and... After we had cl- we had moved, gotten all our stuff moved and we cleaned the place, and I was kind of thinking as we were driving back to look at it one more time and turn in the keys, I was kind of thinking, gee, it's really too bad we gave up this place. It really was a gorgeous place. And if they really had f- fixed the 
the water problem, it would be a really nice place to be. And I opened the door, and I stepped in, and my foot went squish (laughs) into water. And I ran into the maintenance van, and he says, oh, yeah, the the pump on the pool was now leaking. (laughs) So I decided it, it, it was really a good idea we moved, even though we moved into a much inferior apartment. Uh, so, but it was a gorgeous apartment. If they mm-hmm. ever got it fixed, mm-hmm. it probably was was quite nice. And and we here too after referred to that as Sue's Lauren Bacall apartment. <laughs> <laughs> so those are our players. Part of our homework to gear up was that we were going to pick something that each of us wanted to talk about. I was going to talk about the thing that I know the most about right now, and that's as a homeowner, well, what else is there to do but renovations and remodels and uh, the reasons that, you know, people are making money on channels like the Home and Garden Television. We, we've been in this house for three years, and um, it's it's partly my fault because I'm not the most active of people. I'm, I'm trying to change that, but... Um, you know, my uh, my other half is able-bodied, and he's done work in construction before. Not commercial, per se, but he's done set designs and things like that. And uh, he had an ex that was an interior designer. So, um, you know, he's, he's fond of those little projects. And he's also a Capricorn, ergo possibly a perfectionist as part of that. <laughs> So, you know, I, I got the best of both worlds because I mm-hmm. offer to help and then I get told, no, 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 I, I'll just do it myself. <laughs> <laughs> so I really can't complain that it took three years for me to get a new kitchen floor because it's kind of my fault. <laughs> well, that's probably true, but it's not finished yet, is it? Um. Well, to play devil's advocate... um. It's not done in so far as that we haven't put all the pieces back into the kitchen. Ah. So the floor is done. Oh, but, you've got the floor done. Yeah, and okay. so we got to put the cabinets back in, and some of those may need some painting because you know he he designed special doors for them, mm-hmm. and um, <laughs> you know. I mean, I'm the uh, I'm the one who said no. I don't want to just uh, lay a floor down. I want to do this cool pattern, and he says. Oh, I'll go into Photoshop and I'll design it. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, three years in, uh, we had our housewarming in our first year in the house, and I promised everybody that we would invite them back for a reveal once the uh, remodel has finished. Mm-hmm. Um, well, it, it hasn't happened yet. <laughs> <laughs> When's it likely to happen? Well, um, there's a few things on the table that I want to accomplish this year, so I'm hoping it's this year because, <laughs> you know, we we um, we put new siding on, which was our second year in the house, and mm-hmm. our first year in the house we put in a new furnace system. Yeah. And um, one of the things that I say to my coworkers because. Uh, we picked our location based on the fact that my husband and I both work in different towns. So mm-hmm. we wanted somewhere that was somewhat in the middle. And mm-hmm. I work in a downtown area in a city. And all of my coworkers are of the mentality that if it's more than 15 minutes away, it's too far. <laughs> And so they're like, you live out where? Oh, my God, that's got to be a terrible drive. (laughs) And it's like, well, no, not really. I mean, you know, half of it is in-town driving. The other half is highway. You know, (laughs) I I literally changed the radio station. And, you know, before the program's over, I'm parking my car in the garage. (laughs) Yeah. So I, you know, to to kind of spin it in a way they understand, I say, well, you know what? For what you pay for rent on a two bedroom apartment in town, I have a four bedroom house with an acre. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I I have become that thing that that as as a young adult just graduating from high school, I, I scoffed at. 
I, I live in the suburbs and I have dogs in a yard and I take the train into work every day and I walk all the time and I've become that person and I love it. <laughs> I pay each month in mortgage for my house half of what most of my friends live in the trendy neighborhood downtown pay. Yeah. <laughs> I am just so jealous though, Heidi, because I miss the train. I, You know, it, it had started running maybe the year or so before I left and... Oh, I just miss it oh, so much. Oh, the little train. <laughs> yes. <laughs> My grandchildren called that the little train when they came to visit. Well, we <laughs> <laughs> Well, we went back to visit the other year and it was my first time in 4 years since I'd been mm-hmm. there. And you know, I I wasn't um prepared for the the bright green neon on the Quest building. <laughs> And, oh, uh, no. <laughs> instead of the bright blue right and um, you know I wanted to show my husband my town that I lived in yeah. for almost a decade and um, I let him well yeah you know th- this is the spousal language here I let him pick a few things that he wanted to do and um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we, we had dinner at Illegal Pete's in downtown on I think our first night there mm-hmm. and so um we took the, we we stayed in the tech center because we were going for a convention, mm-hmm. and we took the light rail into downtown and had dinner at Illegal Pete's, and it's it's an experience that I had with my mom and stepdad that I wanted to repeat. I um, yeah. I had them stay in the tech center when they came to visit me, and we took the train, and then we went to an Italian restaurant when mom came to visit. I was disappointed to find out that since my moving, they they had closed that restaurant. Oh. <laughs> I had to find another place, but oh no, you know, say la vie. Yeah, the, the, that happens. Restaurants have a restaurants fail a lot and, mm-hmm. and close. So um, yeah, that that's my thing lately. Is that I've been wor- we've been working on remodeling our house for the last few years and. Um, it probably would have been further along if I had bothered to chip in, but I, uh, as the other half would say, I have veto power. <laughs> well, that's probably good, and if he's a perfectionist, maybe it's a good thing you don't help. Mm-hmm. Not that I don't think you could do a good job, but, you know, sometimes perfectionists can get kind of weird. Mm-hmm. And and whether or not you do it right, they may not believe you did it right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but as as for as for um, HGTV, I like. I think this is on HGTV. I like the 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 programs about tiny houses. I saw part of one of those last night. And they and they talk to gay people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and they help gay people build and find houses. <laughs> I, they got they they had one where they built houses for for uh, people, and they've got a a one where they find places for people to buy, and they've got one that talks about tiny houses internationally. Mm-hmm. Which and they're all really interesting. And I would love to live in a tiny house if I could get somebody to come in and do all the cool things that they do on that, sh- that they have on that show. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I'm not sure that I could get somebody to do that. It costs a lot of money, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, let's see. And, and you had something that you wanted to talk about, Haiti, uh, something that was coming up? I did. I am super, super excited this year. So, my zucchini and I are kind of terrible about plans, and we're really, really bad about things like Valentine's Day. But this year, we actually have solid Valentine's Day plans. She and I are going to spend the entire day, um, we've lined up babysitting for the Sprout, and we are going to spend the entire day watching terrible movies at the movie theater, because we found (laughs) out... But Zoolander 2, and Zoolander, keep in mind, is my absolute favorite stupid comedy. It's that thing you watch to just reset your brain, giggle a little, and then come back online and function. Mm. Yeah, Uh that's what that is. Zoolander 2 comes out on the exact same day 
as Deadpool. And part of the <laughs> giant nerd thing is that I love comic books. Um, mm-hmm. Something that I, I got my zucchini into um, along the way, just because, you know, sometimes I think I'm a 12-year-old boy trapped in a woman's body, and I go sit in the corner and read my comic books and watch <laughs> football, and that's how it works. But, uh, we, we are going to go watch a, a horrible, horrible movie about male models and a horrible, horrible movie about comic book characters that are inappropriate. And I am so ridiculously excited about that. We were going to do the nice fancy dinner, but then we found out that Zoolander came out on the same day. So we scrapped dinner in favor of a second movie. It sounds wonderful. And you could always do a nice romantic dinner afterwards or even a quick pizza and beer. You know, it, it's probably going to be pizza and beer because the second we walk in the door, the sprout is going to be all over us, and that, that's just how that's going to work. <laughs> well, pizza and beer is good too. Mm-hmm. Yep, that'll be pizza and beer. But you know, pizza and beer with the family is about the best thing you could ask for, or at it's least the best true. thing I could ask for. And, and and the sprout probably deserves a little bit of Valentine's Day with you. Right, you know, uh, he's a super sweetheart. He's really accommodating, and honestly, he's about as spoiled as the dogs are. So he gets a he gets a lot of mom time. A lot well, that's of mom good. time. Oh, that <laughs> and Sue, you 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 had said that you also had something that you wanted to talk about. Something that you were interested in. Well, yes, they've just released a new Beatrice Potter book oh it it is called uh kitten and boots i believe here i wrote it down somewhere and i think i remember hearing about this that the it has... tale of kitty and boots i think it was written in 1914 oh and i i think i remember part of what i heard about it was that um they're doing something in conjunction with the author's mm-hmm. birthday well, that could be. I, I didn't hear that, and I I just pulled a few facts off of the Internet and off of PBS's NewsHour, which is where I heard about it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, they, there was a, she, Potter had only gotten around to making one drawing, and there there's another person that's going to finish the drawings for her. Um, now, she died in 1943, so, of course... It's kind of amazing that they found a new book that she she had written, but um, I think a lot of people are excited about this. I'm excited about this. Her books are her books are just extraordinary. I I you know in more recent years when I started to think about becoming a parent, I thought about the stuff that I would want to have for my kids, and I just remember all those books that you had when you were a kid. Mm And I remember that, you know, I had a few of the Beatrix Potter books. Yes, you should get all 21 or 3 or whatever it is of them. (laughs) And and I think, I don't remember for sure, it was either late 90s or it was the early 2000s, but there was a movie that was done, and Ewan McGregor was in it. Have either of you seen that? Yeah, that movie I saw. (laughs) You know what, actually... I Sue, I think you and I might have seen it together. That could be too. <laughs> um, I think it was just called Miss Potter. Did, have you had yeah. the pl- pleasure, Heidi? I have not. This is actually one I have not seen. Um, oh. the, the terrible thing is, though, I'm not sure if they ever put it out on DVD. Um, hmm. But uh, you know, as with anything, there there might be snippets of it online here and there. I think I watched it through a streaming service a few months back. Um, it might yeah. it might be on Amazon. I don't know for sure. Of course, they would they they hog everything. <laughs> but um, <laughs> you know, not not having IMDb in front of me, which is one of my favorite resources, of course. Yeah. But um, it, it, Ewan McGregor was the co-star in it, and I'm trying to remember who was the lead. But um, it was pretty wonderful, and um, I, I just remember. That uh, it it was very surreal because her you know they they had her characters come to life in the movie, and um, 
you know, as she was writing about them, they am- animated them on the screen so that her characters mm-hmm. actually did come to life. And uh, my husband said that uh, he likened it to um, Alice in Wonderland and, you know, the acid trips that the authors were possibly <laughs> on. <laughs> That's oh. terrible, <laughs> but it is an excellent. It's an excellent movie. Um, I, I have to give you that. Okay, here we go. Miss Potter. The story of Beat. I, I'm an I, IMVD or DB. Here we go. Um, best-selling author, best-selling in children's books. Oh, what Renee is it? Yes, that's who it was. Yes. How did I miss a Renee Zellweger movie? <laughs> Hard to say, but it's... Um... You know, it's terrible because at one point in time, before I watched it for the second time, only the second time because it had been years since I saw it in the theater, for some reason I thought Natalie Portman played her. <laughs> 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 and it was done in there's a date in here somewhere I know it was released in March of 2007 oh okay so that really ex- that I thought ex- it was older than that there must be another movie about Beatrice Potter that might explain why I think you and I might have seen it together that, that's true um, so we've each had our topics, and actually, I was going to uh, touch briefly on something that I had looked up. Um, let's see, what are the things that I had pulled up here? Well, anyways, uh, something that I pulled up recently in the news was uh, a piece about uh, some of the winter weather that has hit, and oh. um, of course, part of that was that uh, people had shared pictures and and whatever about um, you know some of the uh, of the snowfall that had happened now mm-hmm. if I am correct in my assumption and I'm not sure that I am um, Heidi did you grow up in a warmer climate or did you move to where you are as an adult or I actually I started in a warmer climate which is both good and bad uh, I started in Arizona. The downside is that I am now built like all good desert creatures. I, I need sunlight and warm. <laughs> and when it drops below 70 degrees, I get cold and whiny. And I, my my couch has 17 different blankets on it, all for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to ask, how old were you when you experienced your first snowfall? Uh, now, that is a fascinating story. Uh, because my first snowfall actually coincided with one of those years... That Colorado had really, 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 really ridiculously strange weather. Um, my first snowfall happened uh, when I was relatively young, but it was over July Fourth. Oh yes, I, yeah. I moved to Colorado from beautiful, gorgeous, sunny desert Arizona, and I had been here for maybe a month. And I woke up one day, and it was freezing, and there was frozen water on my lawn, and I had no idea what to do. <laughs> Oh, and how old were you at the time? I was four or five. Okay, so you weren't quite yet school age. No, not quite. Okay, so I was going to say on on that note, knowing uh, Sue as long as I have, I I assume that she had experience with the matter. I was going to ask, in, in light of the recent snowfall, for our northeastern listeners that may be uh, tuning in, um, I thought we might share our favorite winter memory. So, uh, so through the uh, luck of the draw, Sue won the coin toss, and <laughs> I thought maybe you could tell us a little bit about your favorite wintertime memory. Well... Um, actually, I have a lot of wintertime memories that are interesting. I'm not sure which one's my favorite. Uh, I think viewing uh, really interesting snow sculptures 
is the thing I like best about winter. Mm -hmm. And um, you're in Colorado, you're guaranteed to, to have interesting snow sculptures because in, I believe it's Breckenridge, they hold a, a snow sculpting contest every year. And uh, you drive up there and you see all these gorgeous things. But sometimes in a lot of towns uh, or cities, people will just go out and build things. And, and I had a friend here that a few years ago went out and built a dragon and she got uh, food coloring and sprayed it on it and colored the whole thing. And if I could find it, I, I saw a story earlier today about somebody who had um, who had as some artist who had who had t- gone out in the snowstorm and, and sculpted a number of birds around town and and colored them. Oh, I love that! And and they were just beautiful. Uh, here we go. This was in a Virginia town in Bedford, Virginia. He did a a uh, a white uh, a white snow dove. He did a cardinal. He did a yellow finch, two blue jays, and and he just around town he went you know, around town and, and built these things and, and they're gorgeous. They're really they're they're really gorgeous. Um I have a lovely little app on my phone that has good news on it. Because sometimes after I've watched regular news I need something to detox. Yeah. <laughs> and this is real detox cool because, is a good word. And and they just happened to show this whole story about this guy in Bedford, Virginia, who went out and made pretty pretty snow sculptures for his his town. Hmm. And I love scul- snow sculptures because I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but um, within the podcasting community, whenever one refers to things that could be a one percenter issue. Um, and they use they well they they refer to Caucasian people. There is an emphasis on white, and they say it as white. Um, oh, <laughs> I'm not God. sure. I'm not sure I can do that. But and, and it's just an addition of an H before the W. So you are a white <laughs> woman. <laughs> I, I, yeah. Well, by, by, now by the sound of that, I think Heidi, you you might have heard of that. Uh, (laughs) one of my absolute favorite places to be in the world i again i travel a lot and i have some favorite destinations within the united states because that's infinitely cheaper than going to you know a different country but one of my favorite places in the world is washington state and um there is a place in washington state called gig harbor where Mm -hmm. uh the the location is very very affluent and for some completely unknown reason there is a very large group of individuals who are extraordinarily affluent who have taken to doing things like white and <laughs> whip and it goes so far as they give you incredibly weird looks if you don't pronounce it the same way and i'm like mm. I'm sorry. Really... I, I, I'm not quite enough. <laughs> yeah, on the on the note of uh, favorite winter memories, um, oh, I would say I was probably seven or eight years old, and this all kind of rolls into a story about the year that I learned that there wasn't a Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's terrible. But it was okay, and I'll explain. At that time, my oldest sister had graduated from high school and had gone off to college, and I remember uh, being in second grade, staying up late, and the Christmas tree was up, and I remember being told that my sister was going to be coming home that weekend. I had gone out to the living room, 
and had somehow fallen asleep under the coffee table in the living room. (laughs) And I just remember waking up to the sound of somebody messing around with the Christmas tree. And I realized that my sister had come home and she was placing gifts under the tree. So that was the year that I discovered that there was no Santa Claus, but it was okay because my big sister had come home from college. (laughs) And that was my favorite winter memory because we had also had this wonderful snowstorm where it was so bright outside from the reflection of the moonlight on the snow, it, Mm -hmm. it looked like broad daylight through the windows of our living room. And it was just so beautiful. You know, an interesting point was brought up recently by an online friend who uh, happens to be from Germany. Mm -hmm. Um, We both had a mutual podcast that we followed, so we became friends as a result. But he um, was talking with me about the holidays, and at the time, Martin Luther King Day had just come by. Mm -hmm. And I, I explained to him why I had the day off from work. And that inevitably led to a discussion about Columbus Day. And, oh. <laughs> and, of course, from the outsider's point of view, he asked me if we observed Columbus Day. And I, of course, very politely explained to him that that was probably more so when I was a school-aged child than now, because it's not a company holiday. And, mm-hmm. you know, of course... Um, you may or may not be aware, but apparently uh, in some locations there has been a trend to turn that. And I think in Canada a, a long while ago, they turned it into Indigenous Peoples Day. Mm-hmm. Colorado, too, as of this year. Oh, excellent. Did they finally do that? I know that Colorado is the first, one of the first places where they had a big fight and have had riots over the, over mm-hmm. the as Columbus of, as of this year. It became the... Indigenous Persons Day. Ah, okay. Excellent. But you I, still... thought that, I thought the Canadians called their Indigenous population first people. I've heard that, and I've also heard Inuit, but I think Inuit may be referred to a specific tribe. Yeah, the Inuits are spe- a specific set of people, yes, of a specific tribe. So the question prevails, Heidi, uh, although it's Indigenous Peoples Day now, um, does anyone get the day off from work? Um, absolutely, because it's still a federal-ish holiday, so I oh. had it off. Okay. So I got to go celebrate Indigenous Peoples Day, which I do the same thing, I did the same thing this year that I do every other year, and that is we march in the hey, this is kind of incredibly screwed up, maybe we should do something else. Only this year it was a, (laughs) hey, awesome, you finally got your stuff together. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, So, yeah, they... uh, But I know that they have had riots in Denver over over that. Yeah, not in a while. Because there's a a very strong Italian-American community there, and they are really strong about Columbus. And, yeah, well, not anymore. <laughs> well, they may have decided that they might be might be heard if they keep it up. But there was that whole movie with Gerard Depardieu. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm not. I have no idea what you're talking about here. He was the guy. He was the actor that was in the movie Green Card, that oh. is famous for having a very um, a very pronounced profile. Um, in less polite terms, the man could use a nose job. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> but because that's part of his image, you know, just like Owen yeah. Wilson, if he got it fixed, you wouldn't recognize him. Oh, yeah. that'd be terrible. No, I love Owen Wilson's nose. <laughs> <laughs> that's about the only thing that's great about him. Keep the nose. <laughs> that's terrible. Um, but yeah, I, I understand that. Anyway, um, but I and I do believe that in Colorado was the first state where where the native population objected to the Columbus Day celebration of Columbus Day. Yeah, mm-hmm. and that was our first time out of the gate. 
We hope you enjoyed listening and we'll be back for more. The Far Away Nearby is a bi-weekly podcast. You can find our website at tfnpodcast.com or you can find our fan page on Facebook by searching The Far Away Nearby. We are on Twitter as at tfndj. Our email address is tfnpodcast at gmail.com. Leave a message at 206-278-7151.